Yay. And then I'm going to make you a host. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Sony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Share my screen. Oh, on. Scott's on. Mike's on. Perfect. Okay. Can you guys, are you guys able to see my screen? John, look good? Yep. All good. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to your week three workshop for Hashtag Goals. Just a reminder, we have Orlando, John, and Sony in the chat, so if any questions pop into your head, feel free to throw those in the chat, and we will um, get to them at the end of this presentation. If we have a small group at the end, we might just stay here and have a discussion with the team versus breaking off into breakout rooms. We did get a lot of feedback that people are really busy this week, so it might be a smaller, more intimate group, and that way we can hear perspectives from all of the coaches versus just your coach. Um, so just a little heads up on that. But today we are going to be focusing on phase two of habit formation. Last week we focused on phase one, um, getting started, uh, optimizing our starting point. Today we're going to focus on breaking down our barriers and learning to stick with our habits when times get tough. Um, so... As I mentioned, we have received a lot of feedback, especially this week of people being particularly busy with work. Um, people still really busy after the, um, the big freeze. So we understand there's gonna be ebbs and flows, right? In how dedicated we can be to a particular habit and a particular goal. And we wanna learn how to push through those obstacles and those barriers and not allow, allow them to like defeat us and force us to kind of like give up on our goals and our habits. And also not be so hard on ourselves, right? Just because there's a particularly bad day or a bad week, it doesn't mean you haven't made any progress. It doesn't mean um, you have to give up. We all want to see progress in kind of like a straight linear fashion, especially like this happens with weight loss, right? We want to just see day in, day out, we're dropping a pound, dropping a pound, dropping a pound. And that's just realistically not how things are going to work. If we're starting here and our end goal is here, we're going to see some dips some rises, some dips and some rises. And we just want to see that gradual progress making its way to that end goal. The hard part is when we drop down a little, maybe like a little regression, a little setback. If we see that setback day one, day two, day three, right, then our trajectory starts to change. And eventually, uh, maybe you've had a setback day one, day two, day three, and eventually you kind of forget about that goal entirely. You have to give up on that goal because it just feels like you've, um, been pushed back so far. So we wanna learn how to just like bounce back essentially and how, how to stick with that goal. So first let's discuss four common barriers that research has found that we all face. Um, first one is failing to get started. We talked a lot about this last week, the difference between motion and action, right? And knowing that you want a goal and you want to improve and you want to see change in your life is great. But if we're not committed to um, the action and committing to putting in the work every day or every week and staying consistent, it doesn't really mean much, right? So the, the starting point and, and just forcing ourselves to do the work is hard. Um, so that's one reason. Number two is not calling a halt. This one um, is basically not disengaging from a strategy that's no longer serving you. This one's kind of tricky because we know habits take a long time to see some kind of like result, right? So just because we've been working out for a week doesn't mean it's okay, I gotta call a halt, let's change my strategy, it's not working. We know that, right? We just need to keep pushing. But if it's been two months and there's no progress being made from your workout routine or the way you're eating or whatever lifestyle it might be, there probably is something we need to evolve and we need to change in that, um, that approach. Um, now, kind of similarly on the same vein, uh, a lot of times we see this in our field is not wanting to disengage from a strategy that has worked previously. So, you know, I lost weight 20 years ago, here's how I did it. And you try and use that strategy again, it's probably not going to work. Your lifestyle is different. The, uh, your body is different. Your age is different. Um, another way we see this is with like calorie counting and using like a, a scale, let's say. So, you've become, maybe you've lost weight by counting calories, you've lost weight by weighing yourself every day. And for a year, that strategy has worked. But now you, you are kind of like becoming over overly consumed by this calorie counting, and you're kind of, you're not able to enjoy life anymore. And it's weighing on your mindset. 
there's a fear that we're going to rebound because we have to, we have to lose that strategy in order to keep our mindset sane, right? Um, there's a really, there's a lot of fear around rebounding if we disengage from a strategy that has worked for us previously. So we want to learn how to break down that fear and change the approach, keep evolving, but keep our mindset and our physical health at the forefront um, of our goals and our process. Number three is getting derailed. This happens to all of us. Um, there's, there's, you're not going to make significant progress every day, right? And you just have to, to know that, that, that there's not going to be a perfect, you're not going to have a perfect day every day. And getting derailed, like we mentioned earlier, just because maybe you've had a, a setback, it doesn't mean we need to keep having those setbacks. You just get back on track. Um, but that can sometimes force us off track for too long and it's hard to get back. Then essentially we're starting over. Um, and lastly is overextending oneself. This is this one we all face, right? We, willpower is fleeting, motivation is fleeting. So we can't rely on motivation to do the work, right? And we're just relying on motivation to strike we're never going to get anything done. Uh, it, it's not consistent, but the work that has to get done to reach your goals and, and set your habits has to be consistent. So we want to learn how to rely on other strategies when that willpower runs out. Um, and that is where our first strategy comes in. So uh, that is implementation intention. You received this worksheet on Monday. And essentially all this does is allow you to create a structure and create a plan for your habits to exist. We've talked a lot about this with creating a context for your, your, um, your habits to, to, to exist and to set a plan. And that's essentially what implementation intentions is. It's just a plan. Um, so if, if the, the outline is when X arises, I will perform blank. And we've given you some examples here, but if your goal is to walk when you get at home from work, instead of just saying, I should move more. I want to walk more. I want to read more. Let's create a plan. I will walk my dog at 7 p.m. when I get home from work. And now you're, you're creating a commitment to yourself, just like you would do at work, right? If you had a meeting at noon and then at 1130, you weren't really feeling it anymore. You didn't have the motivation to do that meeting. You couldn't just call people up and say like, hey, we're not doing the meeting. I'm not really feeling it. We want to have some sort of accountability for our habits like we do at work or we do in other areas of our life. Um, so there's, a, there's an interesting study done on implementation intentions that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, in Great Britain, they did a study on exercise adherence using implementation intentions and motivation. So group A was the control group. They were just asked to track, track their exercise for um, the week. And then group B was asked to track their exercise and use some form of motivation. So reading materials, whatever it was, they were engaging in a motivational activity. So they were the motivation group. And group C was the implementation intention group, um, which they were essentially asked to create a plan. So they had the tracking, they had the motivation, and they were asked to create a plan for when and where they would exercise. And the findings were really interesting. Group A and group B had seemingly no difference. So the motivation made nearly no difference. They were both at 35 to 38% exercise adherence for one time a week. And the last group, the planning group, um, was at 91% exercise adherence for one time a week. So just by creating a plan, they like doubled their chances of sticking to, to their workout and to their goal. Um, so that just goes to show you that you have to have a plan in place. The science says it um, <clears throat> in order to stick to your goal. Now that's helpful, but things are going to arise, right? So it's, you know, having a plan is great, but we all know you're never, you, it's hard to stick to those goals because we're setting them ourselves. We're not, we're not being held accountable by anyone else necessarily. So it's easy to break those promises to ourselves. And that's where mental contrasting comes into play. So we wanna be aware of the obstacles that are coming our way so we can plan to overcome them before they happen. We don't wanna be like reacting to surprises, essentially. We want to prepare for the obstacles we know are gonna come. So um, I call this training for the chaos, right? And I like to compare this to like an athlete scenario. Um, athletes have to adapt to every circumstance, right? They have to practice for every circumstance. If a, you're a batter in a baseball game and you're expecting a fastball and you get a curveball, you don't just get to pick up your helmet, drop your bat and walk away because it's not what you were expecting, right? They have to practice and prepare for that curveball when they're expecting a fastball. And we want to adopt a very similar headspace and similar mindset. Um, 
to our goals and our habits. So that is why we gave you these two sheets here. If you do any sheet at all, I really recommend at least filling um, sheet five and sheet six out here. They're really helpful in preparing you for those challenges you're going to face. So the first one is identify, essentially you are determining your goal and your habit and then your intention. So that's the sheet we mentioned earlier. And then you're identifying a foreseeable obstacle that's gonna come your way. So uh, maybe you're trying to break late night eating. So your intention is to brush your teeth right after dinner so you don't snack. Well, your obstacle is seeing those cookies front and center in your cabinet. Oh, well, I don't wanna brush my teeth anymore. I wanna eat that cookie, right? So now we can create an instrumental behavior to remove that cue. Um, so an example might be, I'm going to put all my healthy food in the front. I'm going to put my cookies in the back. I'm going to put them out of eyesight so that that cue never comes my way. Um, and there's many examples for this, but this just allows you to start thinking and start moving through those goals, excuse me, through those um, obstacles before they come our way. And then we have two more kind of strategies that you can implement. So those are more like exercises I would recommend you like physically writing down. These are just strategies you can have in your toolbox um, to utilize when you're quote unquote, not really feeling it, motivation has run dry, right? Um, so this is reduce the scope and fix the schedule. This is similar to the two minute rule we discussed last week, um, but basically this works in two ways. All you're doing, right, if, if you're not quote unquote feeling it when you come home from work, but you've committed to a workout, it's in your schedule, you've written down the plan, but you cannot fathom putting on your workout clothes, getting in the car, going to the gym for 45 minutes, it's just not going to happen. Well, is there something you can do? Can you put on your walking shoes and go for a walk for 20 minutes? Can you do a 10 minute ab routine? Something is better than nothing. If you think about all of the times where you've um, had this all or nothing mentality, I, I myself have experiences, I think most of us have, where it's like, I can't get in that great workout, so I'll do it tomorrow, right? So we just skip it. Um, we do this a lot with healthy eating. If we eat something unhealthy at lunch, we're like, today's a wash, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, you're missing out on like, you're missing out on an opportunity to do something. And if you imagine all of those times where you did nothing, those nothing start to add up, right? So in a month, you probably had 10 opportunities to do something and you've done nothing. Well, if you just add up those some things, they turn into something real, right? They turn into um, progress. So that's one reason. Number two is just keeping that promise to yourself. Um, that's how we build confidence, right? If, if we set that implementation intention and we fail at it day one, day two, day three, our confidence starts to look like this. And that's really difficult in maintain, doesn't help us maintain progress, right? So if we have any confidence in ourselves that we can set a plan and adhere to the plan, it makes it harder and harder and harder to um, commit and to believe in ourselves and trust in ourselves that if we set a plan, we're gonna to stick to it. So if you have to just reduce the scope and stick to the schedule. It doesn't have to be perfect every day. It just has to be something. And lastly, don't give up. So breakthrough moments are often the result of many previous actions. Uh, potential is being built up and is unleashing change. You just have to give it time to, to have that breakthrough moment. Um, I really like this example I read in James Clear, uh, his book, Atomic Habits. He gives this example. So imagine you are in a very cold room. It's 26 degrees. You can see your breath. It's freezing, right? You have an ice cube in front of you and it is frozen. You start to turn up the temperature, 27 degrees, 28, 29, and the ice cube is unchanged, right? It's still freezing and see your breath, but the temperature is changing. There is some change happening in this room. Then 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and you start to see that ice melt. It's just a one degree temperature shift, seemingly no different than the temperature before it, but you see that breakthrough moment in the ice cube, right? You see something starts to change and our habits work really similarly. That breakthrough moment is like, right, you're right on the brink. And there's so many times where we give up on week three and week four was right where we had, we were gonna have that breakthrough moment, but we weren't seeing progress, so we give up. Um, allow yourself the time to see that breakthrough moment and don't give up when you're like right right before the, the, ice, still, the ice starts to melt, right? It, it, there's seemingly no difference. Our, we don't need to go to extremes. We don't need to give up carbs. We don't need to uh, you know, work out three times a week. We just need to give our habits time to build up that energy for that breakthrough moment. And 
that is pretty much it. How did I do on time? I feel like I crushed it on time. 1130. We're good Perfect. on time. <laughs> on time. <laughs> okay. So Sony, what do we, what do you think? Should we keep it as a big room and just kind of chat with everyone? Yeah. Keep it as a big room and keep, uh, so it can be a group discussion. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to open up my chat here and stop sharing my screen. So what do we think everyone? Uh, let's, Let's have some uh, conversation here. I'm gonna open it up to my coaches as well. I would love to hear from John and Orlando. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. Maybe, uh, I know we sent out the worksheets on Monday. So if you had any regarding those worksheets or maybe you're facing any obstacles or barriers this week and you just can't get over it, throw them out to us. Let's see if we can come up with some solutions for you. I know Orlando has some things to say and John has some things to say. So let's hear from the coaches. And if y'all have any questions, throw them out. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump right into it since uh, I have my up kind of on the board and uh, pretty much everything you've covered, Courtney, is pretty much something that I've gone through. And um, I like that you mentioned. So obviously us, the coaches, we're in the health and fitness industry. So we will try to make that a driving point. We will always try and obviously prioritize your health and fitness. But this is stuff that should be able to be applied to overall your entire life. And that's kind of exactly where I want to start. Um, so everything that we just covered today, for the most part, uh, I learned at a camp when I was, I think 12 or 13 years old, a, a sports camp. But obviously at that time in my head, everything was sports related, sports, soccer, 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 soccer. I did not even think about how can these things apply to the rest of my life. Um, as you know, the soccer career began to end and that's when you, know, you can say the real world started to hit so you start to apply those same techniques to a much broader, obviously, your entire life. So um, the first one I'll go over time is this. So I think the, the visualization is very, very, very important. So um, again, going back to that camp when I was 12, 13 years old, they've always put an emphasis on, so I'm a soccer player, um, you know, go through the game, go through you taking your touch, go through you running on the field, visualize it. Uh, they put a big emphasis, I always put a big emphasis on trying to use all of the senses. So as an example, I picture myself running on the soccer field. I, I hear the grass crunching under my feet. I feel the wind blowing blowing through through as I run by. I, I feel the contact of, of the ball on my foot, things like that. Again, just using all the senses just to make it as realistic as possible as, as you're visualizing. Um, Another big one, and Courtney, you mentioned it as well. Don't just focus on the positive. You're going to run into some obstacles. You, you got to be prepared for the negatives. So um, as an example, again, sticking to the sports side, uh, I visualize myself, you know, getting tackled. And what am I going to do? Stay on the ground, lay on the ground for the rest of the game and do nothing? Or am I going to get up, get back to my position, get ready for, for the next step, whatever's next? Um, again, so you must, must, must visualize yourself succeeding. Very, very important. But also can't forget about the failures because we all will run into those, into some failures. We can't let one failure knock us down for, for the rest of the month or whatever. So again, that missing one workout can't ruin you for the rest of the week. Missing one, uh, one 30 minute session, you can't just give up for the rest of the week and now you're, you're giving up on another 60, 90 minutes of exercise that, that you could have gotten. Um, and then lastly, so again, just sticking to any time right before a game or in, again, apply it to all of life. If I'm going to present a meeting before the meeting, I take about two to six minutes to just visualize everything going according to plan, visualize everything uh, going the way that I expected. And then that usually will carry over to then me applying whatever I visualize, things like that. So um, I think the visualization is very, very, very important. We, we touched on that a little tiny bit. Um, but then a couple other points that you made for me that, that I think were really good. Again, training for the chaos. So uh, as an example, I have days where, and again, I'll stick it to health and fitness. I have those days where um, I'm in the gym and maybe my workout gets thrown off, off grid, off chart. Well, in that moment, obviously I need to decide, do I just give up? Do I cancel? Do I go home? Or can I adapt? Can I uh, train for this chaos that just happened and, and adapt and do something different? And again, that's where we come in. Again, sticking to health and fitness, um, anytime we're in fit camp in the class style or you're in your workout and you run into a problem, well, that's where we come in. We want you to come talk to us, come pick our brain in the gym. Um, I would hate to see you come walk into the gym 
uh, you get you get changed and you're ready to go. You work out for 10 minutes, but a piece of equipment that you needed is being used. So you decide to just, well, I'm just gonna go change and, and go back to work. There's all kinds of things that we can do. And hopefully between Courtney, John, Sony and I, we can find some some answer, some kind of solution that, that we can then apply, kind of see what kind of results we get. Again, that might be something that gets us no results. Well, we gave it a shot, let's change it up, let's try something else. And again, that's where we come in, where we can give you all these kinds of steps just to help you not give up on the ball immediately. And let's see if we can change some things just to, to keep you on track. Like Courtney said, we're gonna have those days where, oh, you know, trending up and then trend down, but then we took another big bump up, but we're still trending up, trending up. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we like to see as coaches is, is that we're trending up towards our goal. Um, lastly, I think one that's really, really, really important. I'm really glad you brought it up. I wrote it down. Reduce the scope, stick to the schedule. I run into this all the time. Come home from work. Again, I think it's a great example. Last thing I want to do is get back in my car, drive to the gym, um, get a workout in. I'm fortunate enough that I do have my home gym, my garage gym. So worst case scenario, I'll, you know, get a quick 20, 30 minute session here in my, in my garage gym. But even I'll take it even to, to a small, reduce the scope even more. There's days where it's really tough and I decide to just run myself through 15, 20 minutes of stretching yoga and that's my workout. And I was able to still stick to my schedule, get my workout in, but I didn't have to sit in the car for another 15 minutes as I got to the gym. I didn't have to uh, spend 60 minutes in the gym and then another 15 driving home, things like that. I stuck to my schedule. I was still able to get something done. Obviously just reduced it to either light workout in my garage gym or a yoga or pull up one of our, our YouTube videos and knock out a quick 10, 15 minute ab workout, 30 minute fit camp, whatever it might be. But um, I think training for the chaos. So don't give up as soon as something goes wrong. There's all kinds of things that we can do to, to just keep you on track. And then again, reduce the scope, stick to the schedule. Once you do commit yourself to your schedule, again, like Courtney said, it's you keeping yourself accountable. But that's where we come in as well. If uh, you tell me you're coming to my 11 a.m. fit camp class, well, I'm looking for you. I'm waiting to see if you walk in. I'm, I'm making sure you told me you were coming. I will hold you accountable. If I don't see you, you will get an IM from one of us. You will get an email like, hey, I missed you in class. Did something come up? What can we do? Can we you know, make the class start 11.05, 11.10? All kinds of those little things that, that we can do to support you again. Just just to keep you on track, keep you trending up, trending up. Little little dips, little bumps happen all the time. But as long as we keep you trending up towards your goal, we're all we're all sitting pretty. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point you make about us being there for you as accountability as well. That's that is huge. Just having someone that is uh, you know in your corner and is looking for you, looking out for you. Uh, don't forget, that's what we're here for. Even if it's just like a quick casual IM once a week, a uh, casual check-in once a week, it's just you knowing that um, someone is, it has your best interest and wants you to succeed is huge. Um, if you can schedule a workout with a friend, if you can schedule a workout with a coach, you're just more likely to do it. You don't, you're not able to give up on it because someone's looking out for you. We're going to talk more about that next week as a strategy and having that social surrounding is huge. It's one of the biggest um, resources you can have in reaching those habits and those goals. Really Sorry, awesome. John. For us, for me as a coach, it's one of the more satisfying moments when I see you all keeping each other accountable as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for us to IM you five minutes before class starts, hey, are you coming? Well, now it's the opposite way. Oh, well, Mike told me he was going, so I'm gonna be there with Mike, or uh, I know mm -hmm. me and Mike and I talked about this a little bit last week, but um, as other people see you succeeding, that makes them want to succeed with you. And that's where we come in where, okay, maybe you're not, you know, deadlifting a thousand pounds, but we can start you at, you know, picking a 10 pound medicine ball off the ground and then we'll start trending you up a little heavier, a little mm -hmm. more, a little more, whatever it might be. Um, and then again, I, again, I'm sticking to health and fitness. That is our expertise, that's our industry. Uh, but hopefully we can apply this to, to pretty much, like I said, your, your entire life. Yeah, basically John, with, yeah, basically with me, if you get back off of like Courtney, what Orlando was saying, train for chaos. Uh, I can remember, like it was yesterday, we were in the middle of uh, the Filipino Basketball League. We were playing the International League for Summer League in college. 
Uh, we had we were up 25 at halftime, and then things fell apart. Uh, I start getting into it with the fan. Uh, one of my guys throws a punch at the other team, gets ejected from the game. We have a turnover. We have this. We have this. We have this. And what we did was, you know, we're up 25. We're ready to win the game. That's the ultimate goal here. But we're not doing the small stuff to actually make the big stuff happen. And what happened is, what at the end of the story, we actually lost by three points that day. And we were irritated because we were up by 25 at half and we were blowing them out. And then I started to crumble as the leader of the team. And then my guys followed behind me. So with the situational thing, it's super huge. Just like Orlando said, when you're on the way home from work, what I usually tell my guys or people, uh, if you can't, if there is a gym on the way home, go to that gym or utilize that gym, come downstairs before you go home. Because I'm the type of person, once I'm home, I do not want to go out. I do not want to do anything. Uh, you know, yeah, once, I'm, once I'm in, I'm tapped out. I'm done uh, and everything. So, you know, handle those situational things, the small things to get to that ultimate goal. Obviously, you have this goal here where you either want to lose weight, you want to have performance, you want to have this, this, this. But you have to do the small things along the way because that's ultimately what's going to uh, you know, make the outcome successful or, or failure. And you do not want to get into the habit of, oh, tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, oh, tomorrow. Uh, I, I can remember with my when I was going through my rehabilitation with my ACL, with my legs and stuff, and I would be like, oh, I'm in pain today. Well, I don't want to do anything. So I'm going to sit at home and not do anything. Uh, I can remember that. Like, you want to do the small stuff that way you're not in the pain. So you want to just keep adding to those goals uh that's why i always tell you guys make a big goal here and then do the little things along the way and train situationally be ready for chaos just like the storm that we had a few weeks ago we had a completely chaotic storm and everything and it, and it ended up costing me a 500 hundred dollar dog bill to take care of my dog's leg so we just have to be aware of those things and be ready for when it does happen because not everything is always peachy there's a lot of good times but you do want to be ready for when those times kind of just turn upside down and be ready for that. Mm -hmm. And, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's really, it really so, again, with us in this industry, health and fitness, um, those little things do really, really do start to add up and get you closer mm -hmm. to your goal, closer to your goals. Even if it is, um, as an example, if it's weight loss, okay, well, this week we're going to focus on you eating 50 less calories per week, which again, we, we can put that into perspective for you. Uh, but then next week, we got to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, we're going to go 100 less calories, 200 less calories, or maybe we need to go day by day now, 10 calories less per day. And then now you went from, so if you save 10 calories every day, you just saved 50 calories. We got to get you closer, closer, closer to, as an example, the goal that I use, um, I try and quantify things as much as I can for everybody. So it's about 3,000 calories that you need to burn to, to lose a pound of body fat. So that's the number that I try to keep people. So if we can save 200 calories here, if we can save, you know, uh, 500 calories here, if I can make the switch from, you know, whole milk to 2% or whatever it might be, every little calorie that you're saving is adding up to that 3,000 goal, which now you just burn a pound of body fat. So even with like recovery guys, I can remember uh, in my, I'm 32 and when I was 20, I didn't care at all about recovery. I didn't care about stretching. I didn't care about recovery. I didn't care about movement prep. I didn't care about anything, uh, but just doing what I wanted to do. Now it's a point where you have to do recovery every day. Did you do, did you take a hot, it could be as simple as taking a hot shower, taking a cold shower, something like that. Did you put ice? Uh, if you want to get into the technology, did you, you know, buy a hyper ice? Did you get a venom? Did you have heat vibration technology? Are you using percussive therapy? There's so many different therapy exercises that you can do to help you recover that it, it should automatically be a part of your workout. Like do your full workout, of course, but then make sure you dedicate at least 15, 20 minutes after that and take care of that because that's helping you get ready for the next workout. By failing to do that, then you wake up one day, you hurt yourself, and then you're like, well, why am I hurt? Well, this is why you're hurt because you didn't take the time to figure out those fine details of everything. And then I'm glad you brought that up because then now we're getting into the personalization a little bit. Mm -hmm. where maybe as an example, you're coming back from a knee rehab. So we need to focus on your warm up and specifically for you, your warm up might be 15, 20 minutes compared to someone else. 
can come in and warm up in five minutes and get right to it. But then at the end, that person needs to do 20 minutes of recovery and maybe you only need five, six minutes of recovery. So that's where we can start personalizing everything for you as well. Um, and then those, again, so your 20 minute, work, 20 minute warm up, okay, maybe nobody else needs a 20 minute warm up, but you're getting a much better 30 minutes of exercise after that 20 minutes of, of uh, warm up or, or at the end where maybe you're getting a 30 minute intense exercise so then you need an extra 10 minutes at the end to just recover. Uh, or maybe someone else says, I don't need those 10 minutes. I'm going to go take a hot bath. I'm going to go take a cold shower or whatever it might be. But, but those little tiny, again, and I, this is something I will harp on, is those tiny little changes will add up to, again, just get you trending closer to your goal, trending up to, towards your goal. Um, those and guys, that we can and with, yeah, and with recovery and regeneration, what Orlando said too, don't just hit the spot or something like that that hurts or that's sore. Hit everything. Make sure you address everything uh, just because, like Orlando said, some people are going to take a while to warm up. Some people are going to take no time to warm up. Some people are going to take a while to recover. Some people are going to take no time. But make sure you address your entire body. That way, if you do not want to spend money or if you do not want to blow hundreds or thousands of dollars in technology, then just take a hot shower at the end of each workout. Take a cold shower at the end of each workout. I know cold showers suck at times and they're, they're brutal to get through, but do that. That will help you a lot with just recovery and then be able to achieve what you want to do. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks guys. Um, so I just want to address a couple of questions we had in the chat real quick um, regarding the worksheets. So uh, if you guys are having any issues opening the worksheets, I know it's kind of like uh, attachments are tricky at Samsung and we're able to send from home. So if you're not able to open, just let your coach know. And I can just give you the direct link to where I'm creating those sheets and you can download them yourself. And one person mentioned um, the implementation intention worksheet was helpful because it allowed them to design a space for this um, new habit to exist, right? And it created a plan. Um, just like what John was saying with coming home from work and, and having that gym be like on your route. So you're not having to go out of your way to um, make that habit stick. The easier the habit um, is, the less friction between you and the habit, the like, more likely you are to um, stick to that habit. So I want to share something really quickly with y'all that I didn't get a chance to share with in the, um, I, I was trying to really cram everything into that 15 minutes, okay. but Really quickly, I just want to kind of address the four points of intervention. This is the habit loop um, and leave you guys with this, um, a few questions you can ask yourself when you're trying to make habits stick, right? So essentially a habit works like this. You have a cue, you have those cookies in your pantry that you see, you have maybe um, if you're a smoker, the cigarettes are on your table, right? We all have different cues and we all have different cravings toward that cue. So if I'm not a smoker, those cigarettes don't mean nothing to me. But if I am, then those cigarettes trigger something for me. Similar to the cookie. If I know that that upsets my stomach, I'm not going to have a, a similar craving to someone who really gets a lot of pleasure from that cookie. So you have the, the cue of the cookie. And then you have the craving. And the craving is dependent on the cue. And without the craving, there's no need for a response, right? If I don't have any kind of like inclination, no motivation rises, I'm not going to respond. Then you have the response, which is the habit. And then the reward. And we don't do anything without a predicted reward. It isn't going to happen. So um, you can kind of use this loop to create your habits and to, to create your good habits and to break your bad ones. So you can see here on the right, why is this information helpful? Um, to create good habits, this is kind of what I was mentioning. You want to create as least amount of friction as you can between you and your ideal habit. Or if you're trying to break one, you wanna create as much friction and make it as difficult as you can to make that habit stick. So the first flaw here is to make it obvious if you're trying to make a good habit. So if you are trying to eat healthier, put all of your healthy food in the front of the fridge or the front of the, front of the pantry, uh, or don't buy that unhealthy food anymore, right? You have to do what works for you. Some of us work in moderation, some of us don't. Some of us are all or nothing people. Um, so you need to know yourself. Um, second is to make it attractive. So we talked about this, but can you create an environment where it makes this, allows this habit to exist? And then on the reverse there, you're going to want to um, make it unattractive or make it invisible and then make it easy, make it satisfying. We talked about this. That's why sometimes those tracking sheets are really important because it gives you some motivation in the short term. 
Um, make it difficult if you want to break it and make it unsatisfying if you want to break it. So these are four questions I wanted to leave you guys with. Um, whenever you want to change your behavior, just ask yourself this. One, how can I make it obvious? Can I move the, um, if I want to floss, can I move the floss to my, the top of my dresser or the top of my sink? Um, can I make it attractive? How can I make it easy? Like John mentioned, can I get a gym membership on my way home from work? Can I set up a home gym? Whatever, make it easy. And then make it satisfying. How can I make it satisfying? So these are really simple ways to just kind of like add into your routine to understand why a habit is forming and why a habit is hard to break. And then learn ways that you can um, adapt to um, creating good habits or breaking bad ones. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions regarding that topic, let me know. John, Orlando, you guys have any thoughts on that? We've got about five minutes or so before we get shut out here. I think I'll just comment on, again, John's comment about uh, making it easy. And I, again, just sticking to health and fitness, um, Samsung, we are so fortunate to have that gym on site to where, if, you know, right at 5 p.m. you can get up from your desk. It should only take about two or three minutes to, to walk to the gym on site. Mm -hmm. um, again, once we go return back to normal, hopefully as soon as possible, um, my, my first class at the end of the day starts at 5.30. So if, if you can clock out, if you can get up at 5 p.m., you have 30 minutes to you know get things done. You have 30 minutes to, to get to the on-site gym to, to come see me and, and participate in my 45-minute class. So um, again, we are very, very fortunate to uh, work for Samsung to, to have the gym on site available, readily available. Um, another kind of what we can go into on the worksheet again, but I'd love to see you all um, come into the gym to do some drive-by pull-ups or some drive-by push-ups or whatever it might be. So that might be those little habits again where um, uh, I will go do some drive-by pull-ups before mm -hmm. sitting down for lunch or whatever it might be. Or I will go do 10 push-ups before my meeting starts, whatever it might be again. We do have that privilege of having the gym on site. So again, anything that we can do to, to keep you accountable, if that means that uh, you, you need me to send you an IM at, at 4.59, hey, class starts at 5.30. If you get there early, we can get started earlier or whatever it might be, just to, again, speed up the process and just make it as easy as possible. Um, we want to be that source of, of accountability for you. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I would love to get to the point where um, I'm a big team guy, so I would love to get to the point where everyone taking my class, we're in here together. We're in here as a team. We're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to hold each other up to, to higher standards with obviously, hopefully my, my vision, my, my, um, just keeping an eye on you, making sure everything's safe, uh, me supervising everything, but anything that we can do again to, to make it as easy as possible. Again, we can take the class usually starts at 530. If we can get in there at 510, I'll start class with you at 510 and you'll be done by six, get you out, get you home. Um, you just missed all the traffic, whatever it might be. But again, just anything that we can do to, to help you stay accountable to yourself, accountable to us, accountable to your, your workout teammates, whatever it might be. But um, again, I just think all those, those little habits really, really do start adding up. And again, just start getting you closer, closer to your goal. Yeah, I think what you're mentioning with like your environment and your social support, we're, we're going to talk more about this um, next week. But if you can surround yourself with people who are already at the goal that you're trying to reach, right? It, it is a really motivating factor. I mean, that's why CrossFit is so popular, for example, right? You're surrounding yourself by people who um, have the same goal as you for one, but maybe are like a step above you, right? So you, you realize that you can attain those goals because someone before you has already done it. And by surrounding yourself with those people and that social support, it's just kind of creating the norm of your life. If you're, if you're trying to meditate for, you know, if you're trying to meditate and do yoga and that's your new lifestyle you want to adapt, but you hang out with a bunch of people who think that's really weird, it's going to be really hard to adapt that new habit into your routine. So trying to find a circle, a, a group of people, a, a coach who supports that lifestyle is key. It's really hard to push against people. Um, we see this a lot in families, right? In relationships, if your spouse is uh, eating chicken fingers and French fries every night and you are trying to eat healthy, it's really hard to convince this other person, first of all, that, that they should join you. It's almost impossible to do that. It's very difficult. 
And it's difficult for you to keep those habits if someone's pushing against you. So try and find like a unit, a, a group that you can join, a coach that you can work with that uh, gives you that support that you need. And like I said, we'll talk more about that next week, but that is something yeah, to keep in mind that that's a piggy, great point. Yeah, to piggyback off that, as corny as it sounds, guys and ladies, do what works for you. Align yourself with the coach that works for you. Align yourself with the way, uh, way of training that works for you. Uh, it could be my way. It could be Orlando's way. It could be Courtney's way. But align that. Uh, there's 10,000 ways to get to that ultimate goal that you want. Uh, I would recommend trying 10 of them. You don't go to a restaurant and expect the same menu at every single restaurant. Every single restaurant is different. How someone cooks seafood over here is how different someone cooks seafood over here. But ultimately, they're trying to serve you the best thing. Same thing with your goal setting. Make sure you guys pick something, experiment, have fun with it, uh, make it situational. And then at the end of the day, make a decision and just do what works for you. That's the best investment that you can, you can make in yourself. When, you al when you're aligned with something, then your goal becomes very easy. There's a million ways to burn calories. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are fun. I hate running. So if I can avoid running, I will avoid running at all costs. But that doesn't mean that I can't hit some box jumps or jump rope or medicine ball slams or whatever it might be. But again, there's millions and millions of ways to burn calories. That's our job. That's where we come in to hopefully put together some kind of plan, some kind of program that not only will keep you accountable, but hopefully you enjoy it. You enjoy doing whatever it is that, that we have doing to help you burn more calories, to help you eat more protein, to help you drink more water, to help you de-stress, whatever it might be. That's a big one for me. Like, um, if I can help you de-stress in the gym, I'll find ways to get you to slam things around, to um, push big weight, whatever it might be. But again, that goes into personalizing it a little bit. But again, that's where we come in. And hopefully we are your health and fitness experts. And again, we can get you hopefully a little bit closer to, to your goal. Yeah. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions roll in. Um, our team will stay on the call for a, a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions they want to bring up, feel free to bring them up. We've got a few minutes left on this call before we get kicked off, I believe. Um, but I wanted to say thank you guys. I know you guys have to schedule this into your day. You are very busy. We appreciate you guys jumping on this call. It, it means a lot to us to be able to actually speak to you, um, not just through email. So hopefully we'll get to see you again in the gym soon but we do really appreciate you making the time here thank you guys so much if you have any questions we'll be sticking around for a minute or two thanks guys thanks for coming thank you everybody see you be happy safe Friday. have a good day all right guys i have to get on a call so i'm gonna get off <laughs> all right yes. thank you so <laughs> good job, guys good job bye everyone you want us to stay on Nope, I think you're good. Everyone's everyone's oh, logged off. That, that worked out well. We out. Happy Friday. Happy Peace, Friday. Guys. Stay safe. Bye.